section 5.4 is about the triangle mid-segment theorem. <clears throat> and it's important that we discover what the mid-segment is. The mid-segment looks something like this. It's a, it's a line that connects the mid-segment of two opposite sides. And so what happens is this. We outline, and what we can say is the mid-segment of each side, or each pair of sides, is going to result in us having some mid-segments. It looks like this. It's the mid-segment because it hits a point midway between the two endpoints. So x would be the midpoint of QP. And so when I go around, this is the relationship that exists on all three sides. Okay, So my mid-segments would be segment xy, segment yz, and segment xz. What we call that is the mid-segment triangle. And the mid-segment triangle is triangle x, y, z. Okay? That's the relationship that exists. Okay? And so the midpoints of the two sides are a key. We know that they're the midpoints because it divides the segment that is the side in half. When we move down to example one, we have this triangle that's already in the coordinate plane. And what we're going to do is prove a couple of different things before we start. First, we need to find the coordinates k and l. Well, we know that this side should be congruent to this side, and this side should be congruent to this side. So we're going to find the midpoint of hg. That's how we're going to, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to say that this is equal to negative 5 plus negative 7 over 2, comma 6 plus negative 2 over 2, which is going to give us negative 12 over 2, comma 4 over 2, which is going to give us negative 6, comma 2. And so when we have 6, comma 2, that's k. So k is 6, comma 2. Okay, now we're going to find l. l is equal to negative 5 plus 1 over 2, comma, 6 plus 2 over 2, which gives us negative 4 over 2, comma, 8 over 2, which is equal to negative 2, <clears throat> comma, 4, excuse me. So now that we have our two midpoints, what we need to do is we are trying to find whether it's parallel and that is half of gj. So parallel, we're going to check check parallel. Okay, so parallel mean means same slopes. So the slope of KL is going to be equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which is going to give us 2 over, and this is going to be 2 plus 6, 4, which is equal to 1 half. And the slope of gj is going to be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Looks like it's going to be pretty good for us here. because This is going to be negative 4 over negative 8, which is equal to 1 half. So same slopes. So KL and GJ 
R parallel. Okay? So, they are parallel, which means this one is good to go. Now, let's check to see the length of these two things. And so, we're going to find the length. I'm going to scroll down just a bit to give myself a little bit more theorem. A little bit more room, sorry. So, KL is going to be equal to, now we need to use distance formula. Now, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Distance formula. We have our coordinates. And what we're going to end up with is K, we're going to use this, so we're going to have negative 2 minus a negative 6 squared plus negative 2 minus negative 6, so this is going to be 4 minus 2 squared, which is going to give us negative 2 minus negative 6 would be square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to square root of, mm, let's see, we've got 16 plus 4, 20 which is really equal to square root of 4 times square root of 5, which we know is equal to 2 square root of 5. That's the length of KL. GJ is going to be square root of, we've got our points here, 1 minus a negative 7 squared plus 2 minus a negative 2 squared. Don't be afraid to look at your look at your formula, guys. Okay? We want to try to learn this, but it's okay if you have to look back at it. And that's all right. Negative operations here. 1 minus a negative 7 would be 1 plus 7, so that's 8 squared plus. And here we've got 2 minus negative 2, so 4 squared 64, this is 16, so this is going to be the square root of 80, which is equal to, now we're going to try to take out a perfect square, so we can take out a square root of 4, and a square root of 4, and a square root of 5. Square root of 4, 4 times 4 would be 16, times 5 would be 80. So this is 4 square root 5, I know I'm getting small here guys, sorry about that. And basically what we want to check is to see if K, and this should be KL, is one-half GJ. Well, KL is equal to 2 square root 5, and GJ we found to be equal to 4 square root 5. So look at this, guys. This is half as much. Okay, what did we just do there? We proved that these lines were parallel and that KL was half as long as GJ. That's our theorem. That's our mid-segment theorem. The mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to a side of the triangle and its length is half the length of that side. So DE is parallel to AC. And one half DE equals AC. Okay, that's what this theorem says. And that's that's what we're doing here. So when I move down to these examples, they're going to go really quickly because I've already got the measurements in. And you can pause and see this. But if I've got um, UW, I want to find out what the length of this segment here is. All I have to do is look across. Well, if, if ST is 7.4, and UW is a mid-segment, then that means that UW is one-half of ST. We want to do that calculation of one-half times 7.4 is equal to 3.7. Done. Okay? 
Now, the other thing that we need to remember here is this. These are parallel, which means all the rules of parallel lines apply. I've got alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding or same side interior angles, okay? And so when I have a 41 degree angle here, okay, that means that this is also parallel to this, which makes this a transversal, which makes these two alternate interior angles. So SVU is equal to 41. Because it is an alternate interior angle. Okay? Now, moving on to the next example. It's okay, guys. You can pause it here and try to do this one on your own. I would love to see that. I'm going to keep rolling right through it. JL is this length here. Well, because because MN is a mid-segment, we know that because it's marked here. Notice these lines. So it's a mid-segment. We know that JL is equal to 2 times MN. So JL equals 2 times 36 equals 72. Same thing for PM. I've got two M's here. This Okay, we're going to make this here. This is P. So PM is one half of LK. So PM equals one half times 97, which makes it 48.5. Pretty, pretty straightforward there, guys. Okay, and so now we know that this is parallel to this. This one's parallel to this one. Okay, and so when I have M, MLK, so this should be actually PLK, we're finding. So PLK, this here, okay, this angle here that I just colored in, and this angle here, they are what kind of angles? They're corresponding angles. So angle PLK corresponds with angle JPM in parallel lines. So that means that they are they're the same. So that means the angle PLK, the measure of it, is equal to 102. All right guys, that's that's how this goes. I'm marking parallel lines. I'm marking congruent segments. I have to make sure that I'm keeping these relationships straight. So the mid-segment is one half as long as it's the base that it's across from, and it's parallel to that base. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you next time.